One of my favorite movies about religion might surprise you. It's not the greatest story ever told. It's not the passion of the Christ. It's one that some of you may not even consider a movie about religion. Some of you may consider it blasphemous. But the theology of a movie that I want to talk about today that has become one of my favorite about how we live our life in God is the very famous movie, Bruce Almighty. Now, I know this movie may not be suitable for everyone, but I like this movie because it highlights some key messages that are reflected in today's gospel reading. Now, in this movie, a Jim Carrey comedy, the main character, Bruce, has decided that God is ignoring him, that God doesn't care for him. After a number of personal and professional setbacks in his life, he thinks that either God doesn't exist or God is simply there to torment him. He grows so angry that he takes the prayer beads that his wife has given him and he throws them into Lake Erie. But the message that I draw from this movie, Bruce Almighty, and is also in today's gospel reading, is the antithesis of what Bruce believed. That God, in fact, cares very deeply about us, even to the smallest details of our lives. And that God does answer prayer although oftentimes in ways that might be unexpected. In today's gospel reading, we hear that Jesus, his mom, and his friends are gathered at a wedding, and they're enjoying the reception, the party that we all enjoy after weddings. But as the party goes on, they run out of wine. Now, in a culture such as the Middle East, to run out of something in a party you're hosting, well, that's a sign of broken hospitality. So this was a major embarrassment for the family. And this was at a time long before there was the ABC store on the corner that you could quickly run to. You know, when the wine refrigerator was empty, it was empty. So Mary notices this problem, and she goes to her son, and she says, the wine has run out. Now, his, his response doesn't seem too encouraging. He says, woman, what does this have to do with me? My time has not yet come. But Mary, in her perfect model of discipleship and faith, simply leaves him with requests. And she goes to the servers and she tells them, do whatever he tells you to do. Well, we know how the rest of the story goes. Jesus tells the servers to fill large ceremonial jars that are used for washing and purification, up to 30 gallons each. He says, fill them to the brim with water. And once they've done that, they dip out some of that water that is now wine, and they take it to the head waiter, and they find that it is the finest wine that is going to be served that day. From being out of wine to having 180 gallons of fine wine, that's the guest I wish we had at my daughter's wedding. <laughs> but this story tells us about prayer and how God wants to be involved in our lives. Now, prayer is simply dialogue with God. We present to God what's on our heart, whatever it is, and we listen for God's response. Sometimes we approach God with praise. We are overwhelmed by the beauty of the creation with which we have been blessed. Perhaps we see the immensity of the oceans, the grandeur of the mountain peaks, or the beauty of a Florida sunset. And we go to God in praise for all he has created. There are other times that we go with prayers of thanksgiving to God for requests that we have made that have been granted, for blessings we have received in our lives. But most frequently, we go to God with prayers of petition, asking God for things we need in our lives. And this is the type of prayer that Mary models today when she goes to her son Jesus with a request to be fulfilled. Now, I know a lot of people that hold back and are timid about bringing their request to God. Sometimes they think, oh, my request is, is too trivial. It's too small. I don't want to bother God with that. God has more important things to worry about, like, like war and famine and, and curing cancer. And others don't go to God because they say, you know, prayer doesn't work. I've gone to God before with my request, and God doesn't answer my prayers. So forget about it, just like Bruce did in this movie. But Mary takes a need to Jesus 
that many of us would consider trivial. I will tell you, when the white wine ran out at our daughter's wedding, I did not drop to my knees and pray that God would replenish it. But what Mary is demonstrating to us is that any request, any need we have, can be taken to God, and he wants to hear those needs. Think about it for a moment, that Jesus' first miracle at the start of his ministry was not feeding the multitudes. It was not raising someone from the dead. It was not casting out demons. It was meeting a simple need in the lives of the people that he was with. God wants to hear our petitions, large and small, because there is no need too large or too small that God cannot address in our lives. But it's important to notice that how Mary brought that prayer to her son. She simply stated her intention. What didn't she do? Notice what she didn't do. She didn't tell Jesus how to solve it. This is exactly the way I need you to solve it, Jesus. And she didn't give him a timeline, and she didn't set any ex even expectations that he would solve it. Instead, she simply offered her petition to Jesus. When we offer petitions, we can often put limits on God. We can say, God, I need a job, and this is the job I need. God, I need this cure, and this is the way it needs to happen on the timeline it needs to happen. That's not what Mary did. We can also just insist that it happens now, and if it doesn't happen now, we grow frustrated. Because we believe we know what's best, and we want what we want when we want it. We don't trust that God's will knows what is best, when it is best. And so Mary's presentation of her prayer to Jesus today is a perfect model of faith for us. You know, I have found in my life that some of the best answers to my prayers and my needs have been completely opposite of what I thought they would be, and they certainly didn't come immediately upon my request because many, many times it was, it was the time itself that was necessary for that prayer and my need to be fulfilled. My favorite Christian philosopher, Soren Kierkegaard, famously says, and I quote this all the time, life is understood backward but lived forward. It is only in the future that we understand how our needs have been met and how God has walked with us on our journey. And you see, this was Bruce's problem in the movie. God was trying to give him signs, but he could not recognize them because he was so fixated on how he felt things should go and what would satisfy him that he missed the way that God was intervening in his life. And so God decided to bless him with divine powers. This is where the theology of the uh, movie can get a little iffy. But there are still very important things that Bruce learned during this. First of all, as many of us might do, he misused his powers. He thought, wow, if I've got this divine power, now I can answer all my needs the way I need. And when he did, without him realizing it, he was creating catastrophic consequences for others. And then he's put in the situation where he has to answer the prayers of everyone. All the voices of people praying start to encroach in his mind. And he thinks, here's the easy way. I'm going to be a good God because I'm just going to say yes to all. Forgetting, of course, the fact that, that we live in community and we live in relationship. And the answers to our prayers don't just affect us, but they affect others. And there are consequences that me, we may not know or understand. And that is what God is doing, is God is walking not just with me personally, but with all of us in relationship and as a community. You know, we see what happens, and we have a perfect example today of what happens when people just want what they want and don't care about the consequence on others with our government shutdown, where we have two warring political factions that are each insisting on their way is the only way, and not paying attention, not understanding, not respecting the consequences on the 800,000 people that are now getting paychecks or the millions of Americans who are not receiving necessary services. In counterpoint to that, I commend our parish for what we're doing as we move forward with our new parish priority plan. For not only has there been dialogue and discussion, but the thing that I have found most important about this process is that those involved consistently have taken it to prayer. 
to ask for God's will and God's way to be lived in our lives and in the life of our parish. So today's gospel reading gives us encouragement. As the responsorial Psalms said, God has done and will continue to do great things for all nations. And God wants us to come to him with our needs, with our prayers, with our petitions. And when we do, we are encouraged to use the model of Mother Mary, who offered every need to her son Jesus. But she did it in a way that subjected her will to God, open to how God would do it, when God would do it. It was only when Bruce understood this that Bruce finally learned how to pray.